The next thing I'll talk about. All right, so we're at this wedding, right? I'm DJing it. Uh, they had a couple requests, and basically they um, they wanted a good mix, right? They had a good mix of people. There's good. There's about 150 people there, and uh, you know they wanted a good mix. They also loved like the EDM side. They had a couple EDM requests. Um, and, and, but they had some older requests. They had some hip hop requests, right? So I'm, I'm bouncing around, right? I'm, I'm just doing my thing like regular and I knew they liked EDM. So Jersey's different, right? You, you, you play EDM at Jersey and, um, you know, it, it's popular here. You know, it still is even the older stuff that you guys probably never play anymore. It's still popular here. We can still drop bombs and stuff here, uh, depending on the crowd. Not every crowd likes it, but you know, if they have EDM, certain EDM requests and stuff, you know, you can get away with that sort of thing. So I was just going to go in and out. I don't usually do a lot of EDM in a row. I like to, when I'm mixing, I basically like to, ride a wave of BPMs. I like to go through 128 for about 10 minutes and then go through 70, 75, 80, up to 90, 95, 100, then up to 115, then back up to 128. I like, I ride the wave and go up. I think if you stay in the same BPM the entire time, your sets can get boring. They really are. If, if you're doing the same two-step, right, for an hour straight, the same BPM, the same beat, the same tempo two-step for, you know, a long period of time, I don't care how good the music is, eventually you're going to be like, yeah, time to get a drink. You know, it just gets redundant. But if you change the two-step up, you change the beats up, you change the kind of music you're playing, your open format, and you ride the BPM wave, you're going to, you, you know, you're, you're going to retain your dance floor a lot better. I think it's a fact. I, you know, I don't know. I didn't read it in a book or anything. It's just from my personal experience. If you disagree, go fuck yourself. Uh, I, I think I'm right on this one. <laughs> anyway, um, so... What happened was I'm riding the wave, everything, and then it was about an hour left or so, like 45 minutes left or so, and the groom comes up, and he's like, yo, bro, you need to throw down some beats. Melt the faces. <laughs> I'm like, all right, you want to melt, right? And then I went into some shit, and, and, then I, and then I got out of it, you know, and I kept pushing, right? I went for 10 minutes. Then he came back again. Bro, you got to get back into those beats, man. I'm like, oh, this, this guy wants some fucking shit, right? This guy wants some fucking shit. So I'm like, all right. So, um, so I, I went off for the rest of the night. I, I did straight, like, I think probably 30 minutes straight of like just EDM type stuff the rest of the night. And, uh, number one, I got to say like detail crates or everything. I wasn't planning on doing that. Um, at that wedding that wasn't in my game plan, but because I have such detailed crates, because I have all this kind of already set up, I can just go to my EDM. I have sing-alongs, drops, everything just laid out for me. It makes it a lot easier to do something like that on the fly. I'm not sitting there with Serato face bugging, fuck, 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 what do I play? What do I play? Right. And you know, so highly recommend, of course, have your detail crates set up, set yourself up for every possible situation. You know, uh, my, my crate links are in the description and all that shit. If you need, you know, inspiration, but just Set yourself up. Just set yourself up, right? But I wanted to share with you guys what I played. Um, I shared this, basically, uh, I shared what I played last week, and you guys kind of liked it, so I figured I'd, you know, I think this would be interesting um, for, like, my EDM set and kind of how to play EDM. Uh, especially if you're not from Jersey, you know, every it's not going to be uh, often for, you know, like a regular, I don't know, someone who's not in this area, but when it happens, you know, you're going to need to know how. How to play EDM for a crowd, uh, you know, the, the, my method anyway. So this is what I did, right? This is like the beginning of my, uh, like when he came up. It was like, right, so it was 9.30 on the dot if you look at the timestamp, right? So he's like, yo, get into the beats. So I, uh, I hopped up, you know, I, I jumped up like 115, right? And got up to this girl, right? This girl is by Kungs. If you know, just Google the songs. You'll, you'll see what you'll see what I mean, right? So that doesn't. So I, I went into that. It was like 123 ish. It was a perfect intro to go in to that sort of thing, right? They're, they're bouncing, whatever. I played just a drop of that. So you can see I played 30 seconds of that song. Then I went to Miami to Ibiza, right? Which is a little bit of a harder drop, right? Same key, everything, right? Now we're in a hard drop. We're bouncing. The thing with dropping hard drops, okay, like I'm talking like womp, 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 like Jaws or, or Valentino Khan or like, you know, hard drops, right? Like quote unquote fist pumping drops. You don't want to do too many in a row because they get redundant and it gets like to be too much, right? You have to ride a wave with them. So you want to mix them in with regular songs. So you see, I went from Miami to Ibiza into I Love It you know, which is a regular song with a chorus, right? Played that for like two minutes or whatever, minute and a half. Came here for love, okay, which is another, it's another sing-along EDM song, but also has a little drop to it, right? 
Then I went into don't stop. So don't stop the panic is a don't stop believing um, redrum basically that just has a uh, fat man scoop hands in the air, like in the beginning. That's all. So that, that's all that is. Uh, it's like a hype edit I kind of use if I'm not using the original. Don't stop believing. Then time to go into another drop. So then I played the calling, which is a famous drop here, a very popular drop here. It's a thing where uh, in Jersey they like f- they get all the napkins from the bar and they throw napkins everywhere. <laughs> Venue loves this, <laughs> right? Then from the calling, um, because that was like an epic kind of drop where they're like bugging, and I played the whole song. I played that for like two and a half minutes or so. Then I went into Starships, another regular song, sing along, but still has a drop. Okay, so I'm riding the wave back into like a regular song with words. Then from Starships into Tongue, which is a drop. From Tongue, I went into Epic, another drop, hard drop. Right, they're fucking fist bumping their shits off or whatever. Then. Now, since that's so hard, I go back up to something with words. Pursuit of happiness. Accidentally played the unedited version here. I got the end of it. Coming back. Uh, Fuck that. Fuck that. I'm like, oh, shit, shit, shit. While I was playing it. Anyway, they didn't care. Um, Then from that, I went into Pond to Floor. A drop. Then Get Up. Rattle. A drop. Turbulence. A drop. Right? So now I'm heavy in the drop again. Deep, deep drop on that. Like, not, it's not deep as in, like, nobody knows it. Deep, like, hard drop. Really hard. Turbulence is weird. Tur- you probably heard it at, like, a football game somewhere, right? Then, since I was so hard there, I went to Heads Will Roll, because that's kind of like a more dun, 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 dun right? More chill, right? Heads Will Roll, something you can sing along and just off with your head, right? So, still in the same thing. Then I went into Peanut Butter Jelly, a sing-along by Galantis. Great song. Galantis is a great band if you never heard of them. Uh, I don't know if they're a band or EDM. They're EDM artists, but yeah. Great, great song. Sing-along, right? Still with like a little drop, but like not that hard. So I, I brought it back down again, right? Ghosts and stuff because I wanted to hear it. I just really liked that song. They, they danced to it, but they didn't really like it. I think it was too old for them. But Ghosts and stuff is like my shit. I don't know. I'm showing my age, but like that was like, you know, when I was like 19, oh, that shit was so hard. So I played that for me. Anyway, got out of that pretty quick. Then, um, then I played uh, Sweet Nothing, a sing-along. And then I went uh, from Sweet Dreams, that's the 80s Sweet Dreams by the Eurythmics, into the Sweet Dreams, uh, w- which has a drop. It's like an EDM song. I, um, I did that for just the wordplay aspect. And I knew just the Sweet Dreams would break things up, and I knew they would bop to that. But I played only the chorus. So again, if you look at the timestamps, I literally played Sweet Dreams, by Eurythmics for 15 seconds, 17 seconds. If you look at timestamp, right? Am I tripping? Yeah, 17 seconds. Just enough, just a taste, and then we gone. You got to move fast, people, in certain situations like this, right? Then after the other sweet dreams drop, I went into give me everything, right? And I said, all right, now we're now we're gonna end it. And I wanted, and what I did was. I wanted to end it, or I took a risk because I, and I talked about this, you know, with encores and stuff uh, at one of my shows a couple weeks ago. I took a risk and I ended it a little early because I figured if they do the one more song thing, I can like do a crazy like face melting blah, like just hit him with all the fire at once. And then like what an ending that would be, like what an encore that would be. And the groom would be happy as shit because that's what he wanted, you know? So I did the Give Me Everything Tonight by uh, Pitbull, which I highly recommend. You should be playing every wedding. I think it would work anywhere. It, it always bops no matter what. And then they, their last song was Levels. That's what they wanted to end at. So we ended with Levels. And then I had, I literally had it planned. It's tsunami into Animals into Bad. And all I did was I cued each. I have these cues already set. They're all drops. Tsunami, um, Animals, and Bad are all drops. And I had them cued basically four bars before the drop hit for each one of them. And I was just sitting there praying, please, someone ask for one more song, right? So we ended on levels, which is hype, hype, hype. And it was funny. I said, let's hear it for the new Mr. and Mrs., right? And then I, you know, I, uh, you know, give them a round of applause and all that. And then it was like 30 seconds, like not like they were cheering and everything, but nothing. And then finally, thank the Lord. I feel like DJ God's helped me out in this situation. Like the, the ghost of AM came down and like possessed this dude because there was just this one drunk dude, like all off the side who was cheering. And then he just started, one more song, like late. And I'm like, oh, thank God. And then, and then, and then once he started, the whole crowd started and like, I, I couldn't even wait. And I hit, you know, uh, the tsunami, into animals, into bad. And did like a three song, however long that took. It brought me right to 10, a little after 10 o'clock, if you look at the timestamp. So I basically, cause you can see, I, I, uh, I played turbulence into, 
I don't know why. I definitely didn't play Tsunami that long, though. I, I only did the drop, so that's kind of weird. That timestamp is there. But regardless, I had those three ready, melted their faces off at the end, and then that was it. And the groom and uh, the bride and groom were happy as shit. Very, very happy. So I just want to share that with you guys, just kind of like how I play EDM and stuff. You know, maybe it'll be useful to one of you guys. It's just, it's all about riding, mixing in general is about riding waves, you know, and, and, and you got to be conscious of that, you know, a lot of people are, they want EDM, I can't wait, and then you, you, you queue up all your favorite drops, and you just go drop after drop after drop after drop, or bootleg after bootleg after bootleg, you don't know what a bootleg is, essentially, it's a regular song that goes into a drop, regular song that goes into a drop, like, you could do that a couple times in a row, but to me, you got to have other 128 tracks to go in between, you know, earlier on, when I was doing an EDM set, I went from, basically, I went from like the EDM like hard shit and to bring it down to ride the wave I went into ain't no mountain high enough at one point I got like a little intro edit shout out to Nick bike used his intro edit and went into the it's basically the original and ain't no mountain high enough and uh you know it's it's at first it's kind of like a drop in like energy and everybody's like what and they're oh ain't no and they just start singing along and look at that and now you bring a little parents out now you're like you know everyone's singing along and it's just not you're not giving everybody a headache you know you want to ride the wave it's very 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 important break things up and 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 organize your crates accordingly like my edm crates are organized like edm sing-alongs EDM drops, right? That's so I can break things up. You know, I can, it's a sing along. Some sing alongs have little baby drops, but nothing crazy. But like that way, that way I can, you know, play a drop or two and then go EDM sing along or two and then ride the wave that way. You know, it makes it easier for you. And it's just, it's the most effective way to mix, especially when you're melting faces, especially when you're dropping club type like face melting edits at a wedding where you have grandma and grandpa and like all this mixed crowd. You know, a lot of people might even be intimidated to do that sort of thing. You just got to do it the right way. Ride the wave people.